James Tunnel here. Today you might be wondering, what in the world am I doing laying down in the high tide line? Well, there's something washing in I want to tell you about, and that's nurdles. Nurdles are tiny plastic pellets that are really the raw material to anything plastic. So look, this spoon, uh, or at least what's left of this spoon, this was first a little plastic pellet. These pellets go into machines that melt them down to be able to make us products. So this, even this little uh, plastic, what is this, candy bar or something like that, this was first a nurdle, and then it went into a machine to blow it into a bag. Um, so any of this stuff you see this plastic. So it might look nasty here, but this is different than this. This, you and I probably put it out here. You know, uh, somebody who bought it at a store, used it uh, either at the beach or maybe it was a different country, you know, could have really come from anywhere. And then they threw it in the ocean and it fell out and washed it back up on our beach. Um, this is actually not from you and I. You and I would never come into contact with a nurdle. This is all the uh, plastics industry makes these and they accidentally get out. And so it gets out where they make them, which we call manufacturing. Uh, it can get uh, out in the environment where there's transportation. And in the United States, they use uh, rail is one of the main ways that they transport these. Uh, also truck. Uh, they can also bag them up and they put them on ships and ship them all over the world in cargo containers. Um, and then they can also get out once they have to offload them to be able to, you know, put them into a factory that's going to, you know, those machines are going to melt them down and make the product. So they're so small that any kind of wind at all will blow them around. Uh, you know, uh, if they, and if they're not picked up once they spill, and then it rains, it gets into the stormwater, into a creek, then the river, then the bay, then the ocean, then washes back up on the beach. Now, I'm also going to show you where this month in October, I was actually up in Dallas and went to one of their lakes up there, and they're all in the lakes too. So this isn't just a coastal thing. This is an inland thing. It's anywhere that uh, the plastics industry uh, or the transporters or the distributors or the facilities melting them down, any of those. It's a possibility of these getting out into the environment. Now, what I found today, I found over 200 of them in just 10 minutes. I'm here on Mustang Island. And uh, the ones that I found, you can tell they're all different because they're different colors, they're different shapes, they're different sizes. And so that tells me that it's been happening for a long time because some of them are real old and yellowish looking and some uh, are the different shapes and sizes. You know, one manufacturer would probably have, you know, pretty close to the same shape and size, uh, Nurdle. So uh, that's disturbing. Uh, and so there needs to be, you know, things put into place to prevent this from happening, in my opinion. Let me know what you think. Okay, so now I'm down at a lake and I'm in Dallas, Texas. And this is a reservoir I'm by and this is where a lot of the communities get their drinking water from but if i come down to the shoreline here and start looking at the water uh, and then where maybe the water would be uh, you know as the lake comes up and down or if there's strong wind i look over here and look how many nurdles are here so something is definitely going on here handfuls of nurdles and they're all different shapes, sizes, colors, which tells me it's not just one facility doing this. Um, and it's probably, it could be a railroad, could be multiple facilities. Some of these look very old uh, because of the color. Uh, you know, as it's a resin, so as the color gets, you know, uh, darker yellow, uh, it, that means it's been in the sun a while. So some of these are real old. Some are like brand new. So uh, there's definitely an issue here. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because uh, Dallas is eight hours from the coast. So even if you live inland, uh, there could be nurdles. Everything leads to the ocean. And so, um, you know, there could be impacts to ducks. Uh, there's been a lot of studies looking at ducks feeding uh, on nurdles and it gets uh, in their system. Uh, same with fish. 
And so there could be impacts here, uh, but then it could also flow down to the ocean where we know there's also impacts there. Now, why would we even care that these little pellets are out in the environment? There's been a lot of studies done. Actually, 1992, the Environmental Protection Agency wrote a report. It was like a technical document with all these different um, you know, research papers that have been done in there. And they listed over 80 species of birds that were eating these. That was in 1992. So fast forward to today in uh, October 2025, we know there's hundreds of species of birds that eat these things. Uh, they also, in that 1992 report, listed four species of sea turtles and a bunch of different species of fish. So uh, all that to say is that there is an impact. Uh, we know that from studies that have been done over decades. Now, um, the problem is still happening. So uh, like whenever I, uh, I'll show you in Dallas, uh, there was a lot of different kinds of nurdles there but there was some in the water too and that looked new. So it, was, it wasn't like this was from 30 years ago that this was happening, it's happening right now. And this, today at the beach, October, you know, we got some crazy tides. So right now it's real low tide. Tonight it's gonna come up and it's gonna be at the base of the sand dunes. And so this is all recent. This, last night, this is where the water line was where I'm laying down right here. So all this debris, which has nurdles all in it, um, it, that, that, it could have been where the water came up and uh, there were nurdles already in the sand that had been covered up from a previous event. Um, but nonetheless, they all got pushed up uh, and there was probably new ones coming in as well. So these are bad. Now, at the Heart Research Institute, we run a program called Nurdle Patrol. Nurdle Patrol is a citizen science project where anybody can go out, they can say, I'm gonna look for 10 minutes at this high tide line right here, count how many I have, and then go to nerdlepatrol.org and put how many you found, where you were at, and the date, and it'll show up on a map. So that way, it's a color-coded map, so you know, if you find zero, like the dot is green. If you find, like what I found today, over 200, it's gonna be a red color. Now, if you find a purple, that's over 1,000 in 10 minutes. So you can look at this map and say, whoa, that looks real bad. Um, so if you look at it, you're gonna notice Texas, uh, unfortunately, has the highest concentrations uh, outside of a, like a, a major spill from a container. Uh, it is not uncommon to find over a thousand in 10 minutes. That's basically in the high tide line. You're just scooping up and picking up nurdles. Pretty crazy. Um, so, you know, who's in charge of making sure this doesn't happen? Well. Uh, it depends on what state you're in, but like in Texas, uh, there's the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. All these uh, plastic manufacturing uh, companies, actually any company handling plastic pellets have to get the permits, called industrial permits. And in there it says what they're allowed to release and uh, you know if they get in trouble and all that kind of stuff. So those are the state agencies. So if you live in a state, uh, it's probably your environmental protection uh, uh, agency for your state that's regulating these. Uh, if you find, if you go out and find a bit, uh, you know, bunch con high concentrations, go talk to them. Say, this is what I found. Use the Nurdle Patrol map after you put your data in and say, look, we got a problem here. We need to make some changes. Um, but, okay, uh, last thing I want to mention is that, you know, you know how you can get involved now with Nurdle Patrol, but I, I'm also on a couple of other uh, research projects and we just put a publication out uh, showing that uh, a lot of these plastic pellets that we're finding up and down the Texas coast are likely coming from Texas because the Houston Galveston area has the highest concentration of plastic manufacturing in the country right there and so this pride this publication that came out kind of shows you know if there was a spill in Galveston where would it go well it turns out there litters the Texas coastline and so that is not a good thing um, y'all can check it out if y'all want. Type in uh, maybe weathering and uh, transport of nurdles in the Gulf. And I'm sure that publication will come up. It's open source, so anybody can, can get it and share it. Or get a hold of me if you like. And uh, I'll send it over to you. But anyway, I just wanted to tell y'all that right now, we got a lot of nurdles washing in. Now you know what nurdles are. Plastic pellets, the size of a lentil. And uh, come out and do your own survey and uh, help try to change policy about the way these are being handled just by going out and looking for 10 minutes. 
All right, that's it for this episode of Beachcombing. I uh, hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.